and welcome to our Christmas Eve service. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here and we thank you for inviting us into your home. This evening we will be singing some Christmas songs, old and new, having some fun, and Pastor Dave will be sharing some thoughts on God's gift to us. We will be concluding with Silent Night, so make sure that you have your candles out ready to be lit. And as always, we want to encourage you to hit the like and share button, as that is a wonderful way to share this good news of great joy.
Hi, everybody. If you know me, you know that I love dad jokes. And especially at Christmas time, I love Christmas dad jokes. So, here we are. And what we're going to do, just for a treat for you, is we're going to have some of our staff, and they want to do this without any prompting whatsoever. Yeah. Well, they're going to do it anyway. They're going to share their favorite Christmas dad joke. So what is a bird's favorite Christmas story? What, Sarah? The Finch Who Stole Christmas. Hey! What do you call a scary reindeer? What? A Kara <laughs> What did Santa Claus say to the smoker? What, what, what did he say to the smoker, uh, Jarvis? Please don't smoke, it's bad for my elf. Oh. How does a sheep say Merry Christmas? Oh, how, how? Fleece Navidad. What do you call Santa's little helpers? I don't know Santa. That. Subordinate clauses. Oh. Wow. So here's my bad joke, dad joke. Thanks, Dave. Why is it getting harder to buy advent calendars? Why? Because their days are numbered. Oh. <laughs> so what do you get when you combine a Christmas tree and an iPad? What, what possibly could you do, Linda? A pineapple. Oh. Well, well, I want to say thanks for those staff who um, we're willing to participate. Again, great job on all those uh, Christmas dad jokes. But right now, I want to leave you with the very best Christmas dad joke of all time. Here we go. What did one snowman say to the other snowman? Do you smell carrots?
joy he brings won't you listen to the angels sing glory 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 to the newborn king glory 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 to the newborn king when we say the name Jesus Christ we're referring to a special title that means the anointed one or the chosen one that Jesus was born is a part of the promise God made to bring people into a new kind of relationship with him. God shows us that we have been chosen by him. But it doesn't stop there. We need to read the rest of the story to see just exactly what God's plan is all about. But it's an exciting beginning. We can reflect on all the gifts that were given in one normal looking baby who arrived so many years ago. He didn't come with glitz and glamour. He didn't come to the rich and powerful. His birth went almost unnoticed. It was announced to the outsiders, shepherds who weren't particularly known for being invited to anyone's special party, let alone the birth of a king. What does it mean to you and me that Jesus, the chosen one, came into a world that would mostly reject him? What does it mean that God has chosen us to hear his message? That we are invited to know and celebrate the one who changed everything for us. And it's because of him that we can have confident hope, joy in the midst of difficult circumstances, lasting peace of heart and mind, and a love that gives us everything. Here's what the angels announced. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord. The coming of Jesus is a gift. Will you accept the gift? Tonight we light the Christ candle.
there. Today we're going to read from Luke chapter 2 in our The Jesus Storybook Bible. That same night, in amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. Of all the stars in the dark, vaulted heavens, this one shone clear. It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born, to be like a spotlight shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You see, God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all those long years for this moment, and now he wanted to tell everyone. So he pulled out all the stops he had sent in an angel to tell Mary the good news. He'd put a special star in the sky to show where his boy was. And now he was going to send a big choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. He's here, he's come. Go and see him, my little boy. Now, where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall, maybe? Or a place perhaps God sent his, his to a little hillside outside a little town. In the middle of the night, he sent all those angels to sing for a rag, raggedy old bunch of shepherds watching their sheep outside Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at shepherds and say they were smelly and call them other rude names, which I... I can't possibly mention here. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff. But God must have thought shepherds were very important indeed, because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. That night, some shepherds were out in the open fields, warming themselves by a campfire, when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened by the something. The olive trees were rustled. What was that, a wing beat? They turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light, blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today in David's town, in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him. He is sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel, they saw a strange glowing cloud. Except it wasn't a cloud, it was angels. Troops and troops of angel, angels, armed with light. And they were singing a beautiful song. Glory to God, to God be fame and honor, and all our hoorays. Then as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out, of the, stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobble streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, 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 past and in, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached a tumble down stable. They caught their breath. Then quickly they tiptoed inside. They nettled, knelt, knelt on the Dirty, f- dirty dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here. Heaven's son, the make promised child, uh, the maker of the star, a baby sleeping in his mother arms, shining in the sky that night. A whole a light to sh- light up the whole world. Chasing away darkness, helping people to see, and the darker the night got, the brighter the stars would shine. Thank you, Ellie.
The first Christmas message came from the angels long ago. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all people. We give thanks today that Christ is for all people. Let us give thanks. Jesus Christ, born in a stable, we thank you that you are with the poor and homeless this Christmas time. As we pray, live, and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, born of Mary, thank you that you are with young mothers across the world this Christmas time. As we pray, live, and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, visited by the shepherds, thank you that you are with those who have to work this Christmas and those who long to work. As we pray, live, and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, who became a refugee, thank you that you are with those who fear for their lives and those who have left homes and families this Christmas. As we pray, live, and give, shine your everlasting light. Thank you that you are the great light. Amen. Hi, my name is David Morehouse. I'm a pastor at the Journey Church. Let me ask you a question. What's your favorite part of Christmas? Is it the food? I'm talking about the main event the roasted turkey, the lightly whipped or mashed potatoes, the seasoned squash, the homemade stuffing, the, the cranberry sauce, the gravy, um, the, and then comes the desserts, uh, the Christmas you know, sweets and treats, and of course the beverages of cranberry juice and eggnog and tea and coffee, and maybe throw some ice cream in there too. Or is it the gifts, you know, that favorite toy the child wants? Is it the, the cool gadget or the tool? Or is it just a, a simple and modest luxury to enjoy? Or, or maybe it's a, it's a gift for the whole family that they both need and appreciate. I always find that there's joy on both the receiving and the giving of gifts, don't you? Or maybe it's just the fact that your family and friends are gathering together the people that you've touched their life and they've touched yours and you know that you've been shaped by those relationships, this is a time you want to pause and connect and show up and be present in each other's lives and just come together and celebrate that love. Or maybe it's other things around Christmas. You know, for some it's the music. Uh, for others, it's the decorations, both in the home or the decorations that people do throughout, um, you know, our city area. Or maybe it's just the fact that you get to rest from work, that maybe um, you can have those few days to pause and refresh both your body and your mind and your soul so that you can get ready for the next lap, so to speak, of the winter season. You know, I think about all these wonderful parts of Christmas. I think about the celebrations and the comforts, and I think they open us up to consider the wonder and greatness of Christmas itself. Have you ever thought about what Christmas really is all about? I like how um, Carl Henry, a theologian of a bygone era, he put it this way. He said, the early Christians did not exclaim, what has the world come to? Rather, they proclaimed, Look who has come to the world. Now, when you step back, you can see that Christmas is itself a gift to us, to all of us. It's actually something that comes from God. I mean, listen to this scripture. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. To put it plainly, God gave us Christmas. Now, what does this gift of Christmas say about God? Actually, what does it say about you and me? 
I find that often when we look at a gift, the gift says something about the giver and the gift also says something about the one who's receiving it. So let me ask you, first of all, what does the gift say about God? Well, I think it says some really important things. First of all, it says that God wants to be with us. I mean, here's this scripture. It says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Just think about that. God is with us. We are not alone. And God wants us to share in his life. You know, the other thing that the gift of Christmas says about God is that God loves us and wants us to be part of his family. I mean, here again is what the scriptures tell us. See how very much the Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. I mean, God had created all of us to love us and for us to know his love. And the gift of Christmas tells me who I am, that I am one destined to be loved by God and to be a child of the King. Now, that's what the gift of Christmas says about God. What does the gift of Christmas say about you and me? Well, first of all, the gift of Christmas tells me this, that God wants to rescue me. You know, in the first Christmas, we're told that Joseph, the husband of Mary, was visited by an angel in a dream. And he was told by the angel this. He's, the angel said, then after the baby is born, name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. You know, actually, the very name of Jesus means um, the Lord saves or the Lord delivers. And I can't help but think that, that this is what we need to realize why Jesus came. He came to rescue us. I mean, as we look around our world, we see how there is so much at times brokenness and darkness. And in fact, spiritual separation from God. And here Jesus came to be that bridge and to make it right again. To help us come up from the fall and to be in God's presence. In fact, later, the angels, we are told in the first Christmas, would sing to the shepherds these words, um, I bring you tidings of great joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. You know, the other thing that the gift of Christmas from God tells us about us, about you and me, is that God's love shows me that I'm valuable. I think of the saying, some things are loved because they're worthy, but there are some things that are worthy because they are loved. And the Christmas story tells me one fundamental thing about God and me. I have value because the God of the universe, the creator of all, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, loved you and me enough to carry out a wonderful plan of salvation. So what do we do with this wonderful gift of Christmas. Because remember, God gave us Christmas. And he wants us to do something with this gift. Well, actually, the scriptures tell us what he wants us to do with Christmas. We read it here. But to all who believed and accepted him, he gave the right to become the children of God. You see, on this Christmas Eve, I want to again remind you that God wants us to do something with his gift. You know, Sarah, earlier in this service, during the Advent candle lighting, she talked about, will you receive the gift? And I want to ask you that too. Will you believe and receive the gift of Christmas? Again, a gift is only good once you receive it, open it up and enjoy it. Do you have to understand that, that now you need to make that decision about the gift. Do you see the babe in the manger? Do you see that he is Jesus who is God with us, come to show us God's love, save us from sin, our sin, set up God's kingdom so that we can share in God's life now and forever? So let me ask you again, will you open the gift of Christmas? Will you open your heart to Christ, making room in your heart for God to write his story? that will change everything. God gave us Christmas. Open the gift. Believe in Jesus. 
on this holiest of nights, we come joining Mary and Joseph, stunned by the wonder, God is with us. On this most glorious night, we come with the shepherds, filled with surprise, praise, and rejoicing. On this wondrous night of carols and songs, we come joining the angels singing the good news, a Savior is born. On this expectant night filled with the stars, we come seeking, joining the Magi who sought him from afar, seeing in him the reason for life, purpose, and reality. And on this most precious night we come as people walking in a great darkness, having now seen a greater light, Emmanuel, Savior, Lord, the light of the world. Let us draw near. Let us make room in our heart for Christ Jesus. Amen. Every year at our Journey Church, during our Christmas Eve services, when we've gathered in person, we've had a tradition at the very end of our service. We um, take a candle, we light it from the Christ candle, and then we pass that light along to everybody who is as well holding a candle. And we do that in a sense to remind us of what our faith is all about. That first of all, we need to have the light of Christ in our lives. But then we are called, because we've experienced the love of Christ, to share that light with others, with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors, with, um, with the world. And so can I encourage you right now that as you're watching this, if you're with others, all of you, please get a candle and light it right now. And maybe even, if you can, turn down the lights a bit so that the candle even shines brighter. And if you're by yourself, remember that you're doing this with your entire church family as we express our faith and hope and love in Jesus. Let's sing Silent Night. Mother and 
Thank you so much for joining us. On behalf of our family here at the Journey Church, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Have a cool Yule and a Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Oh, 
心。